Okay, this video is going to take you through um, a problem, uh, some examples and problems from lesson nine of module four that we skipped previously. Um, and this lesson is for you if you feel like you are doing pretty well, like you did pretty well on the mid module assessment. Um, the in-class quizzes, um, your understanding, how to graph linear equations, how to solve them, doing a pretty good job with uh, keeping those negative signs straight, and um, otherwise don't, you know, don't need more review. So otherwise you can spend this day on um, review of those concepts, and I have sent some additional review materials home for many of you. Um, Khan Academy is a great place to get some additional practice as well. So, um, otherwise, we'll continue. And we're also going to, uh, this is going to apply to Double Down, which is our problem of the month that is, um, will be due at your uh, conference that's coming up with your EC. So, you'll really impress them if you can apply what we're going to do today to level C of double down, and th that that um, is called love that pig. So it's a very fun problem, and we'll look at it today at the end of this video. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this lesson revisits a problem from, you'll notice it's from module one, and it's lesson six. So you can even go find it in the problem set, and you probably have it done if you have saved those pages. Um, but anyway, so let's, let's look at it. Okay, so this problem says, you sent a photo of you and your family on vacation to seven Facebook friends. If each of them sends it to five of their friends, and each of those friends sends it to five of their friends, and those friends send it to five more, how many people, not counting yourself, will see your photo? No friend received the photo twice. Express your answer in exponential notation. Okay, so remember this was back when we were um, working with exponents and how to rearrange exponential expressions and things like that. So in this situation, we're going to we're going to use a table, and stage one has seven people viewing that photo. And so, because we're not including ourselves as the first person to see the photo. So we're starting with the seven people who see the photo. So the total number of people who see the photo is seven. Okay, so those seven people saw the photo, and it says each of them is going to send it to five of their friends, okay? And so we're gonna call this um, step one, and here's step two. So step one was when you just sent the photo to seven people. Um, so in step two, the number of new people to view the photo is gonna be each of those seven sending it to five, so seven times five. And so then the total people to view the photo would be 7 plus 7 times 5. Whoops, that's not a 5. 7 plus 7 times 5. Because I have the 7 who originally got it, and then 7 times 5 more. Okay, so that's step 2. Step 3... Each of the seven times five people in step two are going to send that out to five friends. So then we're going to have seven times five times five new people viewing the photo. And then we're going to have to add that to our total. So now we're going to have seven plus seven times five plus I'll put parentheses here even though I don't have to, um, plus the new people, which is going to be 7 times 5 times 5. And then step 4, we would have 
of all those new people who saw it. They're each going to send it to five, so I've got times another five, and I've got to add it in here. Seven plus seven times five plus seven times five times five plus And I could also um, write this a little bit uh, shorter, the step four total, as seven plus seven times five plus seven times five squared plus seven times five to the third power. Okay, so that gets us to the fourth step. So I would need to be doing all these calculations. Um, 7 times 5, 7 times 5 squared, and 7 times 5 cubed, and then adding them all together to figure out how many people, total people, saw the photo in step 4. Okay, so what if, imagine a scenario where I wanted to know what happened at the 10th step, or even the 100th step, and I would have to be calculating and adding and calculating and adding. And so what I might want to look for is a way to be able to do that in one step. And it's not immediately obvious that that's even possible. But by looking at some patterns in these between um, the different steps, one, two, and three, um, we actually can convert this into a linear equation that we can solve so that we can do the computation a lot more quickly. So it's a really cool thing, not something that you might necessarily come up with on your own, but you'll be able to understand um, the steps as I go through it. Okay, so let's get a fresh page and we will... Um, start seeing if we can see some patterns here. Okay, so we're going to use um, some shorthand for some of these steps. So I'm going to call S1, um, I'm going to use S1 to refer to the total number of viewers after step one. Um, S2 would be the total number of viewers after step two, and so on. So step four is right here. It's um, seven, the original viewers, plus seven times five, plus seven times five squared, plus seven times five cubed. Okay, so we've talked about how if I wanted to know up like step 100, I would have to be adding a hundred terms together to get that. And so what we want to find is a shortcut to doing that. We want to find maybe a different way to calculate this sum right here. And so we'll do that by looking for patterns. And there's some pretty obvious patterns. Um, as we move from one step to the next, uh, the term that was in the previous step doesn't change, but something's added to it. So here I had 7, here's 7 plus 7 times 5, and then this is from step two. Step three adds seven plus five squared. Step four is the same as step three, except it has something added here. So there's some pretty obvious patterns going on there. That doesn't, this, recognizing this pattern doesn't necessarily get us anywhere because um, I'm just gonna have to keep adding and adding and adding those terms that I don't wanna add together. So we have to look for some different patterns. So instead of just um, seeing how I would move from one step to the next, I want to see some patterns within a step. And so I'm going to look at, um, we'll start with step two. So step two, um, 
oops, that's not the pen I want. Um, step two is equal to seven plus seven times five. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little um, moving around. So I'm gonna subtract seven from both sides. So S, S2 minus seven is going to is going to equal just seven times five because I um, subtracted seven from here on that side and subtracted seven here. So now we've got this new equation and what we want to do is we're going to add something because I want to know what the patterns are in step two itself. Okay, so something interesting happens if I add the, the next term to both sides of this equation here. So for S2, um, the next thing that's going to be added in S3 is this, 7 times 5 squared. So something interesting happens when I do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this equation. I've got S2 minus 7. And then I'm going to, I'm going to change color just to show this. I'm going to add 7 times 5 squared. And that is going to equal 7 times 5. And then show in red what I'm adding here. Plus 7 times 5 squared. All right, so now I've got new equation here and here. And now I want to, um, I'm looking for this expression here. And I'll show you how we're going to find it here. So we're going to leave the left side of this equation alone. So I've got, let's go back to purple. I've got S2 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 squared is equal to, and now this time I'm going to factor a 5 out of that expression, and I'm going to get 5 times 5 times 7 plus 7 times Five. Okay, I want to make sure you saw both of, in this expression right here, this first term has a 5 and the second term has a factor of 5. So I can take it out, can factor it out, and call this 5 times the quantity 7 plus 7 times 5. Because look what happens if I multiply back out, I get my 5 times 7 and then I get 5 times 7 times 5, which is the same as 7 times 5 squared. So all I did was just move this outside the parentheses because it's a common factor in both of these terms. Okay, so once we do that, then we have the 7 plus 7 times 5. And if you notice, the 7 plus 7 times 5 is right here and it's equal to S2. So we can write this equation much simpler now. So we've got S2 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 squared is equal to 5. And instead of 7 plus 7 times 5, I'm going to write S2. All right, so this becomes a linear equation. Now for step two, this was an easy equation to solve. It's just two things to add, but remember we're building, we're looking for patterns so that we could go up to step 100 and do a simple computation instead of adding 100 terms. 
So we're going to do this twice more. We're going to look at what happens at step three and what happens at step four, and we're going to see the pattern there. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Okay, so we're going to do this for step three. So for step three, we're going to do the same thing. S3 minus 7 is equal to, and now I'm going to subtract this 7, because I subtracted 7 from this side, so I'm going to subtract it from this side, so I'm just going to leave it off. This will equal 7 times 5 plus 7 times 5 squared. All right, now I'm looking, again, I'm looking to find this expression repeated in this. And so in order to do that, I'm going to add the next step up. So I'm going to add S3 minus 7, and then I'm going to add plus... 7 times 5 to the third, and that will be equal to all of this, whoops, all of this plus 7 plus 5 um, cubed. So I've got 7 times 5 plus 7 times 5 squared, and then let's put it in purple just to show we added it to both sides, plus 7 times 5 cubed. All right, so we're almost there. So in this next step, I'm going to um, leave the left-hand side of the equation the same. So S3 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 cubed is equal to, this time I'm, I'm going to factor the, each of these terms here. So let's get a color here. Here's a term, here's a term, here's a term. Each of them have a 5. There's one 5, that one has 2, and that one has 3. But I can I can factor that 5 out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, this is going to be 5 times whatever's left after I take a 5 out. So it'll be 5 times 7 plus 5 times 7 times 5 plus 5 times 7 times 5. 5 squared. Okay, so from this step to this step, all I did was take the 5 out, factor the 5 out, and write what was left after the factor of 5 was taken. Okay, so once again in parentheses here, this expression 7 times 7 times 5 times 7 times 5 squared is S3 right here. So now I have S3 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the third is equal to 5 times S3. Okay, so now I have a linear equation where this is my unknown, S3. It's on both sides of the equation, but I could solve for it if I needed to, which is why I'm doing this. And once I solve for it, <clears throat> I have this whole sum, which previously I had to add one, two, three terms together. I have this whole sum done in a simpler way. Now again, step three is not too bad. Um, step four starts getting a little worse. But, again, step 100 would be a lot of work. So let's keep going. Okay, um, 
we're beginning to see a pattern of how to rearrange these equations so that I can get um, another representation of the step sum for whatever step it is in the equation so that I can simplify it. So we're going to do this for step four and if you notice we for for step two and three when we did this our first step was always to subtract the seven to you know to get that moved over to the other side of the equal sign so we're gonna do that and the other thing we did was we added something on and we added seven times five to some power so when it was step two we added seven times five squared the one that was in the next step when it was step three we added seven times five cubed so for step four which is the one we're working on now we would be adding seven times five to the fourth because that's what would be down there in the next step okay so i'm going to do this all in one step so s4 is equal oh sorry s4 and let's get another color to show the changes minus 7 we're going to do the minus 7 um, and then let's add our our term on here so it would be plus 7 times 5 to the fourth because this is step 4 and that would be the next term in the sequence. Okay, so if we do that to one side, we've got to do it to the other. So that means that our um, 7 on this side goes away because I subtracted over here. I've got to subtract here. But then I've got to add this on. So let's write down what we have now. And the stuff that doesn't change, I'm going to write in green. So the 7 went away, so I've got 7 times 5 plus 7 times 5 squared plus 7 times 5 to the third. And now I'm adding, so I'm going to put it in new because it's new, I'm adding this term right here, 7 times 5 squared. Since I added it to this side of the equation, I've got to add it over here. So that would be plus... 7 times 5 to the fourth. Okay, so let's go back to doing this all in green for anything that doesn't change. So S4, or the sum after the fourth step, minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the fourth is equal to, um, and again, this is the and on the other two, we saw these factors of 5 um, coming up, that each of them have at least one factor of 5, so we can factor it out. So this becomes 5 times, and we'll go green inside there, 5 times 7 plus 7 times 5 plus 7 times 5 squared plus 7 times 5 cubed. But once again, this whole quantity right here in those parentheses is the same as S4. It is that sum right here. Okay, you can compare it. So we have S4 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the 4th is equal to 5 times S4. Okay? So in each of these cases, we were able to reduce the sum down to a much simpler form right here.
Okay, so I have um, put up here for you to look at all together, right here. Um, what we, the steps we went through, we came up with this. So S1, which again is the sum of the total viewers after step two. Step two, did I say that? Um, so step two minus seven plus seven times five squared is equal to five times S2. And then for S3, is minus seven plus seven times five cubed is equal to five times S3. And S4 minus seven plus seven times five to the fourth is equal to five S4. So what would step 10 be? Now step 10 would have 10 terms to add up. It would go off the chart over here, right? But down here, step 10 isn't going to look very different here. So pause the video a minute and think about what you think step 10 would look like, and then, um, then keep watching. Okay, so step 10, let's put it, well, we'll go ahead and put it in orange. So step 10 minus 7, because that's the same for all of them, plus 7 times something. And in step 10, this should be 7 times 5 to the 10th, and that will equal 5 times the sum of step 10. Okay, so we've got this 5 that's the same in every equation, and the only thing that changes is step 2, step 3, step 4. The exponent here changes, 2, 3, 4 matches the step number, so for step 10 this should be 10. Um, that's always multiplied by 7, and that was added to this after seven got subtracted. So we always start with the step sum, subtract seven, add this term, and that equals five times the sum of the steps. All right? Okay, so if I wanna know what this sum is for step 10, which is going to require me to do quite a bit of computation. I'm going to instead solve this equation right here. So let's, um, let's see what that would look like. So think of S10 just as a variable, okay, like X or something like that. So um, I want to get, get it on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract S10, subtract S10 from both sides of that equation. And when I do that, I get um, what's left, so let's use green. So S10 minus S10 is zero, so I get negative seven or minus seven plus seven times five to the 10th, and that equals um, remember, it's just 1s10 over there, so there's a 1. So this is 5 minus 1 times s10. And it actually is 4s10. We had 5, took away 1. But I'm going to leave the 5 minus 1 there because it's part of a pattern for this, um, for this equation here. Okay, so the, the last thing I need to do to get S10 by itself is to divide. So I'm going to divide by the five minus one on both sides, five minus one, and come up with, okay, on this side, it's just S10. So the sum after 10 steps, and over here, I'm going to rearrange a little bit. 
and I'm going to factor a 7 out there. But first I'm going to move the order of the terms around. So I've got 7 times 5 to the 10th. And then I've got plus negative 7 or just minus 7. And this is all over 5 minus 1. Okay, so I'm almost there. So now I want to, um, I'm running out of room on my screen. So I'm just going to uh, take this out. Hang on. So I need to erase. Okay. So I want to rewrite this, the numerator. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my screen here. Okay, so I'm going to just erase here. This is going to become 7 times... Um, 5 to the 10th minus 1. Okay, so instead of these two 7s being part of the terms, I'm going to take them Okay, so the, my screen was being a little glitchy there, but hopefully you can see how we got from this step to this step. The only thing that changed over here is the division. So I've got S10, but I had to, I had to rearrange this to make this look, this look nice. So, but here's the big, here's the big idea here. So now to know what this sum is in the 10th step, where it would have 10 terms to add together, all I have to do is do this computation. Okay, so I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to look at that and um, see what that, what this computation um, would look like. So how many people would see that Facebook photo after just 10 steps? All right, so here's a calculation we want to do. So I would do this on my calculator, and if you do it, you're going to raise 5 to the 10th power, subtract 1, then multiply it by 7, then divide by 4, and you get about 17 million. Okay, so after 10 steps of people sending it out to 5 more people each time, um, you end up with 17 million in the 10th step. So it grows pretty fast. Um, and so let's think about this. So, you know, we've got that in, in the problem, we saw this five times five times five coming up, right? So in our sum, that's right up here. I mean, in, in this, um, well, formula is what it is. It, we see that exponent coming up here, but notice we don't have to calculate 5 to the 9th and 5 to the 8th and 5 to the 7th because by doing some algebra and rearranging things and looking for patterns, we can see that we can do it in one step like this. So that's pretty slick. And let's, let's take this even a step further. So for any, um, for any step, so let's call that S, whoops, let's call that S, and I'm going to put the little N down there. So in the nth step, the number of people that see it all together would be 7. So remember the 7 is there because you originally sent it to seven people. Seven had it originally. Um, we would have five, not to the tenth power, but to the nth power. We'd still have minus one. And on the bottom, we'd still have five minus one. So 
the five is the is the um amount that the pattern is growing by the factor that it's growing by each time so that's that's what the five is the n is the step and then the seven is how many people did it start with where did it start from okay so that's pretty cool now you can use the same basic idea and looking at lesson nine you could go back and do that first one on the exit ticket and the first problem in the problem set um, if you get stuck look at the answers don't you know don't be afraid to just look at the answers and see and see if you can figure out why the answer is the answer okay so I want to um, apply this to the problem of the month that hopefully your education coordinator gave you um, back probably in December called Double Down. Okay, so I'm showing you level C of Double Down and it's called Love That Pig. Okay, now you would want to do level A and B first and they should be fairly straightforward for you. Um, and then hopefully you come to level C and maybe even do level D, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. So you found a humorous video of a teacup pig. You should go look for this. His name is Zeke. It's very funny. You sent the video via Instagram to three other friends. Within an hour of receiving the video, those friends sent the video on to other people. Some sent it to just a couple, others to four or five. You're not sure exactly who received and sent on the video, but you're getting tweets from everywhere. You conservatively estimate that on average, each person who received the video sent it to about three other people within an hour of receiving it. If this rate continues, how many people would have seen the video in five hours or in 12 hours? And then, the world's population is around 7 billion, so how long before the video has been sent or resent to more people than exist on Earth? Okay, so that's as far as I want to go with this, but I want, I want to tell you that um, you're going to have to, in order to do this problem, especially, you know, for 12 hours, you're going to be adding up a lot of numbers. So... See if you can figure out how to use what you learned in the last, um, in that problem set, uh, that lesson nine, sorry, that we just went over, that would help you with this problem. And see if you can do it in a, in, um, a more algebraic way with the linear equation. If you get stuck, Give me a call and I'll give you some hints um, or an email and I'll give you some hints. All right. Thanks for listening this long and um, good luck with that.